And good morning, everybody. My name is Dave Lynch. I'm the city manager for the city of Newton Falls, Ohio. And welcome to another edition, our April 20th edition of your Newton, Vol Newton Falls Coronavirus Update Briefing. We do these briefings every morning so you have an opportunity to get some of the local understanding of what we're doing in order to battle the COVID-19. And remember, follow Amy Acton's remarks during the governor's press conference at 2 o'clock for exact medical information. What we say here is for what you ought to understand on a local basis, but of course, always follow Dr. Acton. Well, we're in a very positive mood this morning, and the reason we're in a positive mood is we are flattening the curve. All the prayers that everyone has been saying, asking our good Lord to give us the strength and the goodwill and providence of God in order to flatten the curve, well, it's been working. In fact, all throughout the country, states are talking about ways to reintroduce all of us to those states and to their economies. In fact, states are trying to figure out another way to say hello. 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 So, hello, Ohio. We are looking forward to getting to know you all over again. And such a positive feeling. Let's also follow what, we're, what we have to do in the meantime. It will be a phased-in reintroduction. So, again, follow the guidelines of the Department of Health. Well, we have departments that help us in all kinds of different ways here in Northeast Ohio. And perhaps one of the central figures in helping us in Trumbull County is our county engineer, Randy Smith, who's on our live line right now. Good morning, Randy. How are you? Good morning, Dave. I'm wonderful this morning. Great. Uh, thanks for coming on our uh, program this morning. Uh, Randy, the county engineer is involved in so many major projects, and a lot of times citizens don't even realize your presence. But let's first start off with the way the coronavirus has had your department adapt. What changes have you had to make? Well, Dave, for the listeners out there that are not aware, the county engineer has approximately 65 employees. So uh, when the issue first arose, we made the decision to go ahead and divide the employees up between our two uh, facilities. We have one in Warren and an outpost in Cortland. Uh, thereafter, the crews were divided into two shifts, a morning shift that works from 7 o'clock to 3 o'clock, in an afternoon shift that works from 4 to midnight. Obviously, once it turns dark, uh, the crew returns to the shop and does busy type work, cleaning and things of that nature. Well, it's outstanding that you figure out a way to go into these shifts because uh, people don't realize that the county engineer is sometimes a little bit invisible, but in the meantime, everyone presumes that the city government and the state government are taking care of all our roads and our bridges, whereas the truth is, a good many number of those roads and bridges, they're responsibility of your office, aren't they, Randy? Very true, Dave. We have about 467 miles of county roadways uh, within our borders that we're responsible for. You know, Randy, one of the other things that uh, people don't realize is that the local municipal governments are actually very dependent upon the county engineer because our government entities on a local level are so small we do not have the bidding power to get good prices on a number of things and you as the county engineer have been a great help to us. Can you let people understand the way you've been interfacing with our governments? No, I appreciate that Dave. I certainly appreciate the kind words. I think you know that our office and my administration is focused on collaboration and resource sharing um, during my tenure. And you are correct that that started with salt purchasing, uh, where we constructed a salt dome capable of holding 20,000 tons of material. And uh, we distribute that material throughout the county to about 30 different uh, government entities, school districts, uh, prison system, and things of that nature. And we provide that material at actual cost. We do not do any markups or things of that nature to make a profit. Um, further, we produce our own cold patch type material in-house 
And again, we supply that to any of the governmental entities that are interested in utilizing that material, you know, to patch their potholes uh, come pothole season. Something other folks don't realize, the essence of life is water. And while a number of municipalities like Newton Falls have their own water supply and water processing, Trumbull County Engineer acts as the backup for our system. And in a lot of communities, you are the primary uh, provider of the resource of pure water, aren't you? Well, we do acquire water from several different entities and we're a distributor of that water. Um, now that's wearing my hat as the Trumbull County Sanitary Engineer, two different departments, uh, but you're correct. Back in 2015, uh, the Board of County Commissioners appointed me to the position of sanitary engineer, and I know I've been fortunate enough to work on some very exciting projects during that time, uh, such as the Blueprint to Prosperity Waterline Initiative, uh, getting water to the majority of the western uh, communities within the western part of our county, uh, and certainly thanks to Newton Falls as our water provider on that project. Well, Randy, before we say goodbye to you on this call, uh, I want to make sure people realized that you are a leading force in the completion of what everybody in Newton Falls refers to as the surface of the moon-like quality of the intersec intersection called the right aid intersection. It was smoothed out uh, just before old man winter started pouring that white stuff onto the ground and you were really uh, uh, at the epicenter of getting that project done. Randy, talk about that very briefly. Now again, Dave, thank you for the kind words. Uh, we recognize that communities do need a helping hand uh, from time to time on projects and we're certainly willing to uh, step in and provide that type of assistance when called upon. So uh, in the future, if there's any other challenging projects that the uh, community needs assistance on, certainly please do not hesitate to uh, call us. That's right, and the number for your office is on our screen right now, 330-675-2640. We've been talking to Randy Smith, and Randy, uh, to your whole organization, peace, and to your family's uh, good health. Thanks for being on the line with us. Hey, everyone, take care and be safe. Thank you. All right, that was Randy Smith, who is the county engineer for Trumbull County. Again, one of those almost invisible elements of government that's out there working hard, keeping us safe, and more importantly, doing their job while other people are sheltered in. Those guys are out there. And at this time, we're going to change gears just a little bit and make sure we get in touch with somebody who's been associated with one of the great programs in Newton Falls. It's the Be the Newton Falls Garbage uh, quarantine pickup program and I'm gonna call Brent Powell our school board president who was involved in a very uh, very big important part of that hello it's Brent yeah hi Brent it's Dave Lynch you're live on the morning briefing how are you today I'm doing fantastic how about you great great now Brent uh, you wear the hat as the president of the school board here in Newton Falls but the reason I'm talking to you is it is my understanding that uh, we have hit a very important uh, centerpiece mark in terms of the uh, quarantine garbage bag pickup program. And I have been told by Tom Colosimo that uh, we finally reached 100 bags of trash picked up. And you, coincidentally the school board president, you and your family, were the ones that picked up and put into the bag trash bag number 100. Is there any truth to that rumor? Um, you know what? We did uh, pick up trash along our road uh, leading up to our house yesterday, and uh, there was a considerable amount of uh, bottles and cans and tires. And, uh, yeah, we, we filled up quite a few bags, quite a few garbage cans, and... Uh, you know, a, a trailer that I tow behind, uh, and that's all full of, full of garbage right now. So, um, yes, indeed, we did, uh, we did achieve that milestone, I believe. Well, that is uh, that's quite an achievement, and the reason we want to make a big deal out of it, Brent, is that that program is doing so much for our community. You probably are aware that we are working on one-half shifts, uh, 
one shift on, one shift off in our street maintenance department. So uh, that means we have fewer people to do things like pick up trash along the roadway. So how do we keep our community beautiful during the coronavirus? Well, this is how, because of people like you and your family. So congratulations for putting together bag number 100. Um, I understand that you may have gotten a call from the Smithsonian Institute who may want to make a special display over in Washington. Oh, that sounds fantastic. You know, <laughs> Dave, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's something that, you know, anybody in the community can do. Uh, you know, you take pride in yourself. You take pride in the community where you're from. Um, you know, you see a piece of trash or garbage uh, where you're walking or uh, where you live. You pick it up. You put it in a, in a garbage can. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, I feel fortunate that, you know, my parents, uh, my the teachers, uh, my Boy Scout leaders, they all instilled that in me to, you know, wherever you go, you want to leave it better than uh, than what it was when you got there. And I guess uh, that's what I've lived by my whole life. And now I feel responsibility to instill that into the next generation with my son. So uh, it's pretty easy to do. Well, it's outstanding that it became part of Tom Colosimo's enthusiasm. Well, before we say goodbye, Brent, you are the president of the school board. Uh, how are things going with reference to your outlook about the way the schools are handling the coronavirus and uh, the idea of eventually getting back together again? Well, there's no doubt that uh, this the social, social distancing that, uh, that we're doing has slowed the spread of the virus. And uh, I don't see that ending uh, anytime soon until we're closer to a vaccine. Um, but, you know, going the virtual route, the virtual learning uh, that the schools and the states uh, have implemented, I, I think are a great uh, next best option for us. Um, and, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, there's still a lot of unknowns out there right now, but I think under the conditions, we're doing the best that we can. And, you know, I, I do applaud our, our administrators and our teachers for taking on this, uh, this endeavor right now. Well, Brent, um, we are excited about the way the schools have met the challenge, and we're excited about the way you and your family met the trash bag quarantine program. Congratulations on bag number 100. Congratulations to you, to your wife, Jill. And I understand your son Ethan was out there as well. He was in one well, of the photographs that we showed earlier. So uh, you've got quite a family. So peace to you, peace to your family, and good health to your family. Thanks a lot, Brent, for being on our briefing. Thanks a lot, Ms. Lynch. We'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. That was Brent Powell from the Newton Falls Schools, the president of the school board of Newton Falls. Well, folks, uh, we've talked about a lot of positive things today. And one of the most positive, of course, is the fact that we are getting to the point, slowly but surely, where we're ready to phase in the coming back together. So it's crucial that you keep up what you're doing. Uh, I liken this to a, uh, a football or basketball game in which you've got a healthy lead. You're coming to the end of the fourth quarter, and the coach says, keep the defense going. Don't let this victory slip away from us. That's my message to you. And part of keeping the defense going means keeping the prayers going. God in his providence listens to us, but we've got to call out to him so he's got something to hear. Well, that again brings to a close another edition of the morning briefing here in Newton Falls. As I mentioned, wear the masks when you're out at stores. Keep the prayers going. Get onto your knees and talk to our Father and ask Him to help us. And finally, as I always say, God bless America and God bless the city of Newton Falls.